first began watching Star Trek with my mom, it kind of became a family event and appointment viewing for us. I was only three or four years old at the time, and, uh, and so as I grew up, I kept watching Star Trek with my family. I remember um, we had a big party for all good things, you know, the, the last episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, had a bunch of friends over, I think we even had a cake. <laughs> um, but it, Star Trek to me has always been something that I've done with, with my mom and, and dad liked it too, so we watched with him. It's been a family show. Um, and, uh, and I kind of took it and ran with it, I think more than they expected me to <laughs> in a lot of ways. The thing about Next Gen, um, it's a group of adults who like each other and are trying their best and are really smart solving problems together. And, I, and everybody on that show is acting in good faith. They, they were people with good intentions and they were smart and skilled and good at their jobs. And, uh, and it was cool to see an environment model on a television show. And it was really great for me as a kid to have that every week. I remember the first time I heard about Star Trek Online, I followed that development very closely because I was super excited. I was a huge Star Trek fan. I grew up watching Star Trek with my parents. The more I learned about what Cryptic was doing, I got more excited because I, I knew, um, I was excited about the fact that everybody was going to be a captain and I wanted to fly my own ship, right? Everybody wants to be Kirk. Star Trek Online came out in 2010. I was playing the beta in 2009, I guess, right before, you know, um, before the game actually launched. And so to see how the Star Trek universe was evolving, we hadn't seen anything. Enterprise had been off the air for at least five or six years. We had the JJ movie um, earlier that year in 2009. But Star Trek Online was the first like multimedia presentation for this is how the Star Trek universe uh, has progressed since Next Generation. So that, you know, that was a really exciting moment. How I kind of Bridge the gap from being a player to actually working on the game is a is a pretty crazy story, um, and I definitely consider myself lucky that <laughs> that it even happened. Um, I started playing Star Trek Online during the closed beta. Like, well, it, just as much as shooting somebody, uh, being a scientist is a big part of what Star Trek uh, should be about, and so for the missions where you were scanning things, I, I like that because that felt like a scientific task that a Starfleet officer would do, but I just thought, oh, this would be cool if it were a bit more interactive. And a few years before, there was another Star Trek video game that had come out called Star Trek Elite Force. Um, and when you used a tricorder in Elite Force, there was a little sine wave matching minigame that you played that made the whole science part of it, you know, a bit more interactive. Um, I took that, that uh, minigame idea from Elite Force and, and recreated it in SDO's UI and posted that on the forums uh, for uh, SDO's closed beta. And that forum thread took off. A lot of people really liked the ideas. I came up with other ideas inspired by like the hacking game of Mass Effect and uh, you know um, uh, Pipe Dream, like rerouting plasma conduits and stuff like that. Um, so I posted all these ideas, and uh, the forum thread got bigger and bigger, and people got really excited about it until eventually, you know, it uh, caught the notice of a Star Trek Online podcast. This is a thread that was on the Stowe forums that I actually um, tracked down, and I've had this in my bookmarks for a while now because I've been I've been following this topic with a lot of interest. I I hope that the uh, developers are as well. Um, this is from a guy named Thomas the Cat. Um, I, there's three more. So this next one is called a, a a signal wave analysis, and basically you would have to change the frequency and the pitch of your signal to match up with the the red lines. Um, the developers saw that and they took notice and the community manager at the time reached out to me. I actually bought the, the art that I had created of those mini games um, and took them internally and, and worked them into the UI. Um, and they, uh, they also offered a couple of cool things like they offered to make me a character. So back when Memory Alpha was a place you could go, there was actually a, a commander, Thomas Maroney. Uh, based on me that uh, they, they threw in there as a as a little thank you, which, uh, you know, I will always be grateful for. So I submitted the mini games to, to Cryptic and they decided to buy them and incorporate them into the game. That happened uh, during Star Trek Online's Season 2 release. <laughs> um, and uh, we're on, uh, internally we call our latest release Season 25, so that <laughs> gives you some perspective on how long ago that was. 
Um, but I'll never forget when season two went live and, and I could uh, play the mini games and I could run around Memory Alpha and see my character. Um, but, uh, but that happened and then a few months later um, there was a job posting on Cryptic's website for a graphic designer who would work on, on websites for Cryptic and Atari. So I thought, well, what the heck, I don't know anything about making video games, but I do know how to build websites and do graphic design. So I applied for that and um, uh, in my cover letter said, hey guys, remember me? You really like my art uh, for the mini games. It was really cool. Like even if I didn't get the job, I was just excited to be at Cryptic. So I worked as a UI artist on uh, STO for three or four years, um, but eventually I was ready to try something different. And um, so after, after kind of realizing that, I, uh, I looked over at the, the guys on the ship team and realized that's really where my passion was. I had always loved starships. Uh, I had grown up writing uh, or drawing starships in my notebooks when I should have been paying attention in class. Um, uh, both, you know, drawing ships I'd seen on screen versus making and also making up my own ships. And, um, and I made friends with all the ship artists who came and went on the team because that's really what I, you know, what I wanted to do was, was make Star Trek ships. If I could do that for my job, that would just be amazing. So, um, so I went to the executive producer at the time. At this time, it was uh, Stephen Rucosa, and I sort of said, hey, I'm, uh, I'm ready to try something new. And he said, all right, well, uh, you can take the ship art test in two weeks. So. Um, Learn how to learn how to make 3D art, and uh, good luck. <laughs> and um, and so I did. I, I did a bunch of uh, 3D Studio Max tutorials, and um, and did the ship art test. And I created a, a new type of starship, and um, textured it the best I could. And so I'm very lucky. That was definitely an opportunity where um, I owe it to the kindness of the other people on my team for giving me that job few years into my career as a ship artist, um, we were having a leadership transition. And uh, as part of that transition, <clears throat> our leadership wanted to give Mike uh, discipline leads for each discipline to make sure that he had a good group of um, lieutenants under him to uh, execute on his vision and the goals for the game. And so uh, during that whole, <laughs> it, was a, it was a big time of change for SEO and during that time, um, I, I got picked to lead the Starship and UI teams based on my uh, UI experience and also my passion for the IP and the game. So I first started talking to Dave Blass, who's the production designer on Star Trek Picard, uh, on Twitter, <laughs> of all places. Um, Dave uh, saw a post I had made about Star Trek Online ships. Um, I had been working for a long time with Eagle Moss, on a collection of STO ships, uh, ship models, and I had just finished up my last round of magazines for that collection. And so each ship comes with a magazine, about 20 pages. So I had done like 400 pages of content um, of lore and like behind the scenes, how we design those ships, um, uh, writing and art for those magazines. And I was excited about that accomplishment. And so I posted it on Twitter. And uh, Dave saw that post through <laughs> blessed algorithm and um, and reached out to me. You know, and I, I think that that was that was actually what sparked this whole creation, which was how do we make sure that with the Federation fleet is the fleet that are going to make us happy, me as a designer, and make the fans happy as well. And then that is why. But again, it's that thing going back to the bird of prey. It's like, well, why do we use the bird of prey? Because it saved money. And my thing was, okay, how do we save money, get a better product, and do cool stuff? And the answer was, well, who else is out there designing starships and creating cool stuff? And I'm like, well, Star Trek Online is doing amazing stuff. Why are we not talking with them? And everyone's like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, okay, I'm going to reach out to them. And I reached out to uh, Thomas, and, uh, and, and there it went. I just sort of couldn't believe it. Um... Although I didn't, I don't think he had Picard in his bio on Twitter at the time, but it was clear that he was a Hollywood professional and that he had been around. But I, I think he he did introduce himself and say, I'm working on Picard season two. 
you know, your ships are really cool. I'd like to talk to you about working with you on a project uh, with us. And um, it was, you know, I, I think a lot about how to be successful, you have to work really hard, but you also have to be really lucky. And I definitely felt like I had gotten really lucky to get Dave's attention and for him to be willing to reach out and, and talk to me about um, about what he wanted to do next. The design is this and that. I go, well, why don't we get some of these other ships from other, you know, I'm like, what do we do? And then at, by that, we had already started this work on the, uh, on the Star Trek. I go, why don't we use Star Trek on Lunge, Lunge ship? And they're like, well, are they any good? I'm like, yeah, they're good. So the Star Trek Online original ships that are going to be in Picard are the Sutherland class uh, advanced uh, research science vessel, the Reliant class uh, light cruiser, um, the Ross class legendary exploration cruiser, and the um, Gagarin class battle cruiser. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't really even know what to say about it uh, when I think about it too much because it's, uh, it's, I've said over and over again, I never, I never thought, I never imagined that I'd be able to get to do this uh, and contribute to Star Trek in this way. Um, I can't disassociate myself from the fact that working on Star Trek Online is what gave me this opportunity. Um, there's a, a, a phrase, you know, 10,000 hours makes you an expert. Well, I earned those 10,000 hours working on Star Trek Online over the last 10 years. And, um, and because of the game and because of uh, the passion of the team on the game, um, I wouldn't have had this opportunity. I just, none of these connections would have been made. Um, and so I will always and am always going to be proud of my position on STO um, as, as lead ship artist and working on this team. And I, you know, and I think the game has a, a lot to offer too because um, in many ways, as far as multimedia presentations of Star Trek go, between the 2009 movie and and Discovery, Star Trek Online was kind of it, you know, um, and, and we had a lot of great comics and we had a lot of great books, but in terms of like audiovisual interactive presentations, you know, like we were holding the torch for a long time and we took that responsibility pretty seriously and I still still do. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to think that we started out as in some ways, you know, a little game that could, <laughs> if you want to think about Star Trek Online's, you know, original inception from Perpetual and then the translation of ownership to Cryptic and, and the Cryptic team had you know 18 months to stand up an MMO and then I came on the project about a year after that and then uh, my journey through um, through working on the game from, from UI to ships and to ship lead and, and now using that as a spring forward to being able to actually contribute to an actual Star Trek TV show um, it's it's pretty incredible. Um, it's been a long road getting from here to there.